So it is time to test out now the gaming performance of Xiaomi's Mi Notebook Pro. Although it's not a gaming laptop at all, this is more designed I feel for work, for business, you can play a few titles on the side thanks to its dedicated GPU that it has. So it has an NVIDIA MX150 which is more or less like the NVIDIA 1030. It's not a powerful GPU but it's sufficient enough to get playable frame rates in games 1080p as you'll see later on from this video here. So we're checking out the performance, we'll keep an eye on the frame rate, we'll keep also an eye on the thermals just to see how hot the CPU is going to get. And not only internally but also externally I've got my thermal probe here so I will check out to see whether it will get up to 50 degrees centigrade like the 13 inch version did. And also check out the fan noise here, I've got my decibel meter to see just how loud it's going to get. Now if you're not aware of the specs, this one has the 8th generation CPUs in it now. So we've got the Core i5-8250U, which is in this one here, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 250 gigabytes of SSD storage, which is PCI times 4 storage that's in there. It's also got wireless AC, 60 watt hour battery. So let's check out and see if we can play games with decent frame rates or not, and how hot is it going to get. So you just saw that I was running the Heaven benchmark there in the start of the video, and this is the score here. Now this result is after overclocking. The stock scores I will show you in my full review, but if you're interested, the stock score is about 550 points. So overclocking, we gain an extra additional 200. Another benchmark that I've also run is Fire Strike here, and this is again with the overclock. So this is the maximum it's going to get. This is not a gaming laptop, remember, so these scores are quite low. They're quite poor there. But the physics score is very decent. And the reason it's a little bit better here probably is because I have also undervolted and increased the power limits here. So the TDP has gone up over stock so we can hold the cores there. Now you're probably saying, well, hang on, that's not fair. Why don't you review it as stock? Well, what I'm trying to do here is get it as hot as possible. And this is, means it's going to be hotter than stock. But I'd also believe that when people decide to game on this, you are probably going to go in and overclock that GPU because of a few things. It's a performance boost and it really doesn't put the temperatures up much at all, about 5 degrees Celsius. That's it and you get around a 30% boost to performance which is really good. Check out my other video I've got of that, of overclocking and increasing the TDP on this to get maximum performance. So what I have done here with my overclock is I've added 220 to the core and then 1 gigahertz to the RAM, which may seem like a hell of a lot. You're thinking, hang on, that seems crazy. It's because they really underclock these GPUs to save on battery life, to save on heat. And as I said, there's no real con to doing this. And if you do notice any glitches or artifacts or you freeze up or something like that, just tone it back a little bit. You're not going to damage it. I've been testing the system at 220 with these overclocks and it's been running perfectly fine. So I will be monitoring the temperatures, any thermal throttling, if that does happen, if it does get hot enough. HW Info is running here in the background. So let's get started now with some games. We'll check out the performance. I'll also show you what settings I will run. And later at the end of this video, we'll have a look at the surface temperatures too of this Mi Notebook Pro. So this title now is Project Cars. Let's try and make up some ground here off the lights. Keep it clean and keep your... So Project Cars looking good. 65 frames per second at the moment. Temperatures around 70 degrees. Yes, I just hit that other car. That's some very poor driving there. So this one's fine on those settings, no issues with it. So I'll move on to a more demanding game and that's Witcher 3. So I'm going to go with the lowest settings here. I feel that really you couldn't run it on medium or high as you'll see in just a second that the frame rate, a little choppy, I mean it's just over 30 frames per second so it's not really fast enough so when there's a lot of action going on things it's going to slow down a hell of a lot. So I'd say that this game probably better off running at 720p, which I'll test right now. So look at that massive difference. We've now gone up to 60 frames per second, probably even higher than that because I've got V-Sync on to keep things really smooth. And this is on the low setting, so what happens if I tweak it up to say medium? 
Okay, so under medium settings here, it has dropped down to about 44 frames per second. So you probably want to just keep it on low, 720p, and that game's going to be smooth and playable. And now Battlefield 1, this is 1080p again, but I have set the settings too low. I feel that that might even actually be a little bit too demanding for this 1080p resolution, but we'll see how it runs. Oh, and I died already. That didn't take long at all, did it? So we're looking around... 60 frames per second, dipping down to about 30, 40, 1080p, which, okay, that's not too bad. I'll try to jump in, not right on the front line there, so I don't die in two seconds. So I see where this guy's going while well, in the tank. And we can last for more than two seconds in this. So that frame rate is actually looking a lot better than I thought it would be, around 61, 60 frames per second at the moment here, with those dips of course. Let's see if I can surprise anyone up here. Probably not. No, they're already up there. So looking good, playable. Now if you must have a constant 60 frames per second, then lower that resolution down to 720p. And now on to Counter-Strike. Now this game of course is a lot less demanding, so this one should perform, I feel, on the highest settings, 1080p. Should run it without any issues whatsoever. I have eyes on the enemy. So as I expected, this is running perfectly fine, super quick, and also died super quick. So over 150 frames per second the whole time. So these light out games, things like League of Legends, Dota 2, they're gonna run all fine. And wow, I managed to get one kill then. And die. Dead. Yep. <laughs> but jumping around is not going to help me when I'm reloading. But hey, my gameplay is not the point. It's just to see how fast this is going to run. So perfectly fine with these older games here. And I'll just add this in. Why not? Just have a look at these download speeds here from my 300 megabit line. Now I'm about two rooms away from where the router is. And we're getting up to 38 megabits per second, megabytes per second downloads. And I literally download a gigabyte in about a minute or so. It's super quick. Really impressed with the wireless on this device. So I have Rise of the Tomb ready here. I'm going to run it with the same settings I tested on the Mi Notebook Air 3. So that was 720p and basically what you're seeing right here. Now Rise of the Tomb Raider for some reason is running a lot slower than that of the Mi Notebook Air 13 with the same GPU. Now it must be down to drivers or something. I did have a hell of a time trying to get on the latest NVIDIA drivers. I had to disable driver uh, signature enforcement and yeah, it took about 7 or 8 attempts to actually get it to update so I could run Battlefield 1 because the driver it ships with is only 3.8.2. And that's not exactly a new one here, but Tomb Raider, yeah, it is playable, but I'm not too sure what's happening with that frame rate because it should be running at around 40 frames per second, a lot faster than this, or even up to 50 frames per second. So it seems to be driver related, this one. And last but not least, Grand Theft Auto 5. So I'm running this one again in 1080p like most of the other games. And I've just turned down some of these settings here. So some of them are tweaked down a little bit here. Things are normal. Of course, you can tweak that to your own personal preference there. But as you see now that it is running perfectly fine like this. Getting around 90 frames per second, 80 frames per second here. And it still looks really quite good. So we'll have a look at temperatures here. Looking at the GPU, it doesn't go over around 68 degrees. And then the CPU here gets up to 82 degrees maximum. So that's the internal temperatures, but let's have a look at the outside of the notebook. 
and it's up to 45 degrees. So that's about five degrees less than the Mi Notebook 13, which got up to 50 degrees Celsius there. And you'll notice that the palm rest, good temperatures on that, 33 degrees, 31. The keyboard is up to around about actually 45 there right in the middle too. So it's just that top half now. I've been gaming for about approximately an hour. So it is getting really quite hot to the touch there. But as you've seen, internal temperature is good. No thermal throttling. And then the underside gets up to about 43 degrees. So very warm there. If you were to use this on a lap, it's going to warm your lap up quite nicely there. But you'd also be blocking those intake vents, which is not a good idea. So what about fan noise? It does get loud, but not obnoxiously loud like some gaming laptops. This, of course, is not a gaming laptop, but let's have a listen to the fan noise. So there we go. Overall, the performance, as you can see, it's not a gaming laptop, but it's nice to know that it's not just work only, that if you decided that, hey, I want to have a couple of rounds of Counter-Strike on this, it's going to be super fluid and playable 1080p on maximum settings. Same goes for games like League of Legends. Now, if you want to play something more demanding, like Witcher 3, then that's when you have to lower the screen resolution down from the native 1080p to something like 720p, and then it was super playable, as long as you keep it on low settings. Same goes for Battlefield. So Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1, um, Call of Duty, the latest titles coming out. 1080p will work, I feel, but just put it on the lower settings to keep the frame rate up so you've got playable frame rates. So the thermals, it's good internally, but it still gets up this area right here, very toasty to the touch. So it gets up to around 45, 46 degrees, um, just like the smaller 13-inch version with the same GPU, uh, different CPU, of course. But... I feel it's okay. Yes, that's bad that it gets really hot. However, internally, it's only getting up to around 82 degrees. And that was with my modification, my tweak to the TDP. So I boosted that up. That was increasing the heat there as well. Now, when you're only using something that's just CPU demanding, it will only get to around 65 degrees centigrade, which is really quite good. And the GPU never went over 70 degrees. So that's another positive there. So overall, as a package, I feel it's good. If you look at other slimmer laptops with similar specs, they also do get quite hot to the touch. But 45, that's, that's borderline acceptable. Really, I would like it to be a little bit cooler than that. So you're probably better off to prop it up, put something underneath there just to increase the, the amount of airflow underneath it. And the other thing you could probably do as well is use one of those ugly, and I don't particularly like them, laptop coolers if you were going to be gaming for long extended periods on this particular notebook here. So I'll be back with a full review of this model here, which I'll test out things, not just gaming, but of course productivity, things like encoding videos, editing 4K videos, um, a little bit of Photoshop as well, and just to get an overall impressions of just how good this laptop is or if it's recommended or not. That will be, of course, in my full review, including battery life. I hope to catch you then. Bye for now.